Welcome, listeners. We've got another great episode here with uh, Rich Klein, uh, frequent guest, almost co-host. Uh, Rich and I go way back. Looking forward to that. But first, thanks, sponsors, Top Spinini Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Harvest and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, COMC.com, as well as Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So welcome, Rich. You're a regular here. And uh, this time, you we're going to I think you interviewed me one time. I've interviewed you, but this time you were interested in the dueling questions format that I've rolled out with a couple of other people. And Correct. so you know how it works. You ask me a question, you get to go first. And then I ask you another question. And then I ask you a question, which may be related to that, or it may be, uh, or maybe a fresh question. So really looking forward to it. Again, no rehearsal, no rehearsal, unscripted. And uh, I don't want to tell you to do your worst because we're friends, but uh, looking forward to your questions, Rich. Welcome. I've got a question I've wanted to ask you for 30 years. Okay. When I first came to Beckett, Fred, Fred Reed, who was our editorial director and basically worked directly under you, said to me, we were talking about what, what your role should be, apparently because I can do so many different things. And he said you were a champion tennis player and ping pong player and world ranked in both. I was just curious, really, how good were you at tennis and ping pong, and how did that affect how you had other interpersonal relationships? I'm not sure that affected me in the company, although we did have a, a ping pong tournament uh, that I seemed to win uh, with, uh, played with my sister, who was doubles, mixed doubles, I guess. But um, no, I think uh, sports has always been a big part of my life, and uh, tennis was my main sport uh, growing up. I don't really remember playing tennis until uh, I kind of quit Little League Baseball. And when I quit Little League Baseball, I took up tennis. And so, you know, I had really good eyes, a good, really good hand-eye coordination. And uh, and I was left-handed, which is an edge. And so I wasn't – I got by the time I was 16, I was a, a pretty good player. I went to some, you know, some tournaments. I did go to some national tournaments, but I didn't do that great. I was certainly never nationally ranked uh, locally and regionally. You know, I did fine. I, w- I won some tournaments in high school and, and got um, – you know, but never got past regionals in Texas. Texas is – really pretty tough. But, um, so I had a, a fun career in uh, more high school tennis. I went out for the team when I was in college and I could see that I really wasn't going to play much. The guys were, there's just different levels of ability. And I don't know that I wasn't willing to work it, but, um, but, uh, I just kind of burn out. And as far as ping pong, you know, that, that you know, table tennis, I, I played a lot with my brother and my, my whole family, kind of my parents a long time before I could beat my mom you know, uh, much less my dad. But then it, after a while, I got I got uh, pretty good. And I did represent SMU one time at a, at a college tournament, but uh, national ranking, certainly not. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, competitive within, uh, uh, you know, small circles. Do your parents still have your tennis trophies? Uh, they gave them to me and I, I pitched most of them. I mean, I, I just they're they're awkward sizes. You know, they're 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 they um you know, I kept them for a while and then like the, the, uh, the racket would break off or the arm would break off. And, uh, I, you know, I kept, uh, I kept some of the plates for the trophies, but they, you know, trophies that you work so hard for they're especially back in the day, they weren't participation trophies there for winning or runner up or something. They're, they're kind of, they're cheesy when you look back after some decades. So, I mean, I, I know I earned them and, and, you know, especially when you're playing doubles, each one gets one, but, I think they didn't make one of the moves. So I have I the updates and that's it. And I have a few newspaper clippings from, uh, uh, you know, to, to, for evidence. But uh, again, uh, that was a part of my life that was fun. Probably sports gives you confidence when you play against people and, and you, and you, you win some and you lose some. I, I, I won more than I lost in tennis. Okay. You're up. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the regional differences in the hobby, hobby, especially as it relates to your personal experience of what must have been culture shock based in the early 90s, moving from, you know, the New York, New Jersey area, coming down to Texas. Uh, what, what, what adjustments did you have, not just in the culture, but also in uh, the way the hobby was expressed? Or was it more national by then? Well, the hobby was still pretty regional in those days because the only national things were a few of the hobby publications, but even those weren't going everywhere. Uh, and in addition... Um, you had things like, you know, the only, it was the only dealer, the dealer network was Sportsnet. You didn't have eBay. You didn't have even people selling on Twitter or Facebook. Those were years from being created. So I remember there was 
one of our teammates, Theo Chen, used to travel every weekend somewhere around the country. And he's going to Milwaukee for something. I think he was going to Milwaukee for one of the celebrations of maybe the last game at the ballpark. And there were a couple shows. And I said, well, make sure you take your Jim Gantner rookies with you. And he goes, well, I said, and so, you know, he'd bring trade boxes with him. And he said the very first cards anybody took from him when he came up there were the Jim Gantner rookies. Nowhere else in the country will you ever be able to sell Jim Gantner rookies. And yet he had been with Milwaukee 14, 15 years at that point. Nowadays, because the hobby is so national, if you want Jim Gantner rookies, all you have to do is just go on eBay and just get them sent yep. to you. You don't have to go through machinations to get them. So I was in the New York metropolitan area. We had the Megalopolis. We had fairly big shows a lot of weekends. So basically the entire East Coast, you know, was the same area and the rest of the country, the Midwest was always underrepresented. But I remember when I was working with Mike Gordon and how he was going to Case Western, Corey Snyder rookies were actually selling for more in New York than in Cleveland. Everybody in Cleveland had the Corey Snyder rookies, the 85 Olympics. Um, in New York, they wanted more. I mean, as it turned out, though, Cleveland knew him better than New York because his career never quite. But I was looking today on one of the emails I got in 1994 on this date or yesterday. Corey Snyder had three homers in a game like 10 years after his professional career began. I was like, where did this come from? I didn't realize he played that long. <laughs> I think he had a hole in his swing, but when he connected, he, you know, he, he looked good for a while. So, uh, okay, I think it's your turn. But before, I'm just going to supplement your answer because I know that you meant not just to say that people would look at eBay for Jim Gantner, but nowadays uh, Beckett Marketplace would be a fabulous place to look. And then also Com C would obviously yes. be a fabulous place as well. So I'm going to get the plug in for Com C and Beckett Marketplace. Thank, thank uh, you. That's overlooked. So that's not um, an example. Your turn. Okay. One thing I always liked you doing was pricing at least, you know, with the annual book until about 96 or 97, at least the small vintage section, because I always wanted you in some way to remember where you came from. I know that sounds weird to say. And I know I've heard you talk on the podcasts that your biggest I don't want to say regret, but you would you would go to a national and you'd say, I'm in these meetings all day and I'm not being able to do what, you know, to be with my people, so to speak. I'm being out there. You know, I'm, I'm in these meetings all day and being the CEO is very difficult compared to actually we'll, we'll use the term having fun like you're doing now when you go to a national. Yeah. Um, did you ever wish that you would at least for maybe one day a year go back and pricing cards just for the fun of it for the last few years you were running the company? Uh, not Exactly, because I, I'm I don't know that I'm completely an I'm not an all or nothing guy. In fact, I try to defeat that notion, but it's kind of hard to be half in and half out on that. I mean, basically, I was so immersive for so long, and you were you know a big part of the team and the help in that. But it really went up through summer of '96, where I was just full speed ahead, kind of no breaks, you know, from one deadline to the next, and then took a pretty big family vacation that that uh, that allowed the kind of the monthly deadlines to be handled by the uh, respective. Uh, sport uh, editors. And then uh, I suppose it, you and I did uh, another almanac or two after that. Right. And then after I had my heart attack, I, I really never went back to it. it would, I don't know that I was compromised, but it just it, it just seemed like it was uh, the right time. And I, again, I felt confidence in you and others that, uh, that, the, that the legacy, the, the, you know, the, the, the accuracy would carry on. Uh, but, you know, for me to jump in, uh, from being the, the senior guy to being, you know, it just, it just seemed like it, the time was right for me to, to step back. And if I really step back, it would allow you and the others to, to more fully blossom that I wasn't looking over your shoulder and sharpshooting, even though, you know, and, and over time, I just was a little more removed. Like you said, being able to do in the annual book every year and, and, and doing every card and every set, it just was a, you know, it, I'm pretty visual you know, just that going through it and doing that just really, uh, you know, emblazoned that. So even now, I still remember things that, like you, I remember things I don't know how I remember. Right. But I just do because there there were a lot of reps in the years. And, and I love doing the vintage. But the, like you said, the vintage was a tiny part. And I, I feared the day that these almanac and these other treatments would need to be chopped into old and new. And, and then the vintage would you know, gradually. So I, I you know, I love the vintage. I, I, I loved it all, but um, it just, it, it was a real challenge. Well, Krause did chop their standard catalog into old and new. And I always thought on a business level, we could have done the same thing where tw instead of forty nine ninety five for one book, twenty ninety maybe twenty nine ninety five for each in a combo price of fifty four ninety five. 
but, but then you always run into the trouble like with tops. Tops always ran together. Do you really want to split up tops? You know, for almost every other set, it works to split up. But tops is your is your uh, always question mark. Do you want to keep tops together? Or do you really want to split them up? <laughs> well, that's a decision they made, and it was a, it was tricky. And you know, we had, you know, we we we, we did we did. Okay, yeah. last question I think because we're we're almost out of time, and you'll you'll uh, answer this one uh, nicely I think. But you are so into baseball, Rich, and I had such confidence with you know, in the baseball card, especially the annual books of, you know, kind of working up the, and you were pretty much, I won't say you were the only guy that I trusted, but I certainly had a high level of trust of your ability to, um, to kind of proofread or, you know, back in the day when I was, you know, the first pass through and you were reviewing my stuff, I had the utmost confidence in baseball that you'd catch any, you know, I didn't make very many mistakes, but I, I'm not perfect. And I would really trust that you would catch something. So I'm going to take that as a given as the standard for you, but you also helped on the football and basketball and some of these others, and those aren't your best sports. So what was your, your feeling on some of those other things um, besides baseball? How did you get up to speed or develop well, confidence? Well, I know the sport, and I'm sort of going to talk about my comp C, what's going on right now for me at comp C with this. When you hired me originally, I was the hockey guy. Now, that would have been really tricky because then <laughs> I had to learn the whole sport on the fly using a hockey expression. Yeah. Now, I'm probably spending... 50% of my IDing time, IDing hockey cards, just showing how brilliant you are. But sure enough, I'm doing hockey where, you know, and Upper Deck's doing a great job with hockey. And I know they're not a sponsor, a sponsor, but, you know, one of our former teammates is really high up at Upper Deck and doing a lot with hockey, and that's Grant Sangram. And Grant used to always swear when he was doing baseball, he never understood hockey. He thought it was crazy. He thought the pricing was, and yet we're both spending a lot of time doing hockey now. You do what you need to do. You know, basketball, I knew the old basketball cards. There weren't that many old basketball cards. I could learn that pretty easily. And there really wasn't anything tricky. Football, I had to teach myself somewhat on the fly. I mean, I, I had read the Mike Galella, Mike Gordon. If I forgot there was somebody else, but they did about a two or three year newsletter on old football. So I actually had some background knowledge. I always remember going to you, what's this Arnie Weemeister guy? Oh, he's in the Hall of Fame. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, you know, so there were a couple of obscure guys I didn't know about. <coughs> you know, you, if you know one sport. And you know how to do the cards, especially in vintage with one sport. You can learn the others. Look at all these guys today that learned about Zion and Luca, who three years ago probably would, or Giannis, who probably three years ago would have said, why would I ever look at a basketball card if it's not Jordan or LeBron? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, we're uh, out of time, Rich. Uh, always a pleasure. We'll be back again, listeners, uh, 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 tomorrow with another uh, different episode. We kind of sprinkle it around and Rich. Rich's versatility, uh, I hope, is as appealing to, to y'all as it is to me. We get a chance to, to uh, not just duel the questions, but to do some topics that, are, uh, that others are not uh, dealing with. So always a good time. Hope you're enjoying it as I am. Be back again tomorrow. Thanks, Rich. Thanks,